Now, on this video, I'm going to try to share some things I've learned riding in cold weather, things that worked for me, things that have evolved over the years, and that information can extend your riding season or make at least riding in colder weather a little bit more palatable, or in my case, I really do enjoy riding when it's cold. Now, I've had several people inquire at the channel, what do I do to ride in cold weather to make it more comfortable, better, safer, easier? And I don't know, but I do a lot of simple, basic, nothing high-tech stuff that seems to work for me and allows me to extend my riding season about a month on each end of the brutal cold winter when I salt the roads. So in no special order, I'm going to try to put some of the things that I have been very careful and meticulous about doing. Number one is I keep all the bikes fully charged. Now I have one or two. I, when it really gets cold, I have two. And I switch them from bike to bike to bike so that the, the bikes actually get charged about every two days. Each bike has its lead. And having a fully charged battery is a critical thing. Now if you go out on a... <laughs> A freezing cold day with a half charged battery and you have to start the bike when you buy gas mm, well I don't know I don't know about that but I know having a fully charged battery is the first thing if you're gonna ride in cold weather modern bikes seem able to charge the battery in cold weather and especially the lithium batteries which they have their quirks in when it's really really cold sometimes you have to hit the starter two or three times and they, war they have an internal warming and then they start normally. Now this is a big thing a lot of people don't do. I do it. I have a, a thermometer and what I do is this is, I, I have little pieces of tape that I can move. This is as hot as I'm willing to ride. This is as cold as I'm willing to ride. Now beyond this, you deal with ice on the road, salt, other things. And then I have on here increments, like at this point, I want to wear at least two shirts, double shirt, then my electric gear, then the electric gloves, and on and on and on. But this would be different for every person. Every person would have a different, and, and the tape can move, and I'll explain that whole thing right now. And it's evolved over many years, and I've changed it many times. And when I come home from a ride and I'm real uncomfortable, I just move the tape. And it's an easy way. Now, when I was younger, I'd, I'd have this even further down. And I moved, I've moved i moved this up and up as I've gotten older. Same thing here. You can see this is when I was probably in my 60s. This is in my 70s. But for each person, it's different. And for each age, it's different where you're comfortable riding. And as you get older, I think that window kind of shrinks a little bit. Right now, my window is from where this tape is right about at 40 degrees beyond that i'm just not comfortable and one reason is because i usually ride north of here where it's five to seven degrees colder so if i leave here at 40 the odds are good it's going to be almost freezing and a lot of times i get to where i'm going and the lakes are all frozen shut so at the most basic level when you start at the very thing the first thing i found is a big help if you don't have electric gloves Gloves with a gauntlet keep the air from going up your sleeves. These gloves are a whole lot warmer than if you only, you have, only have summer gloves. That's one tip. Gauntlet gloves tend to keep you warm. Now, again, these tips are not in any random, they're in random order, but one of the things I found real handy, a great tip. The fuses that go to your electric riding gear, and I'm going to get into that later. I, I noticed the fuse is blown, and I did it. Because these connectors, when they connect, if you're not exactly perfect, you see a spark, it blows the fuse. Now, if you're out riding and it's really cold, you don't have any riding gear and until you replace the fuse. So I always say it's a good idea to have some extra fuses with you at all times. Now, in my case, I always have the radar detector on the bikes that are adapted to it. And having a bunch of spare fuses, that will absolutely, the day comes that you need that fuse, You'll be so glad you have it. And again, you can just, the wires that you plug in your electric gear on, they tend, they're not really perfect. If you're not careful, they'll spark, and then you have to change the fuse. That's a great tip. There's another good basic tip if you're going to ride with electric riding gear and be plugging it in and out. Have it, an extra fuse. I had this one taped right to the side of the fuse, 
and that allows me even if I don't have one in my pocket I always have a spare and here's another tip you don't even think about these things if you only have one motorcycle you don't have to make a decision but in my case I have bikes that you sit out in the open great when it's ultra hot perfect and bikes with windshields now as this is not really a full like a touring windshield but this keeps a lot of the cold off you when it really gets brutally cold so I always say I have hot weather bikes bikes that'll go in both and then really in the cold weather I would always leave the GS home and take any of the bikes that have a windshield and when I got the uh, the MT-09 one of the things I thought of and Jose found some for me on the internet was really touring windshields and what I wanted to do and I haven't done it yet some of the things I still haven't gotten around to this is four bolts this comes off and I can put a much higher windshield if I want to ride the MT-09 in cold weather a windshield is a really really big thing when it really gets brutal but again any of the bikes with windshields so much better than an no windshield bike and this bike even better than say the R1 it has a low windshield this is the highest windshield of any that I have so if I want to go out and it's really really cold I would always be looking the first thing save the bikes without windshield take a bike with a windshield but let's for a minute assume you only have one or two bikes and maybe neither one of them have a windshield you still want to ride in cold weather then I'm going to go through the little scenario I went through over my lifetime of different cold weather riding gear how it worked and what I think you can save some money and some time learning from my my experience so it was about five years ago I bought these these are battery powered gloves mobile warming I think they're five years old the batteries have lasted five years I keep them on charge charge them in the summer once every two months it seems to help haven't had to replace the batteries yet and in anything up to the most brutal conditions these are fine and they're, they're very comfortable but there's only one downside they're not leather see that's to me that was a, a big factor and I always thought about it I said mm, I'd, I'd much rather have leather but I never had I had a set of the uh, Tourmaster gloves that had the wires I didn't like them at all I, I just wasn't comfortable with the, with the wires there but over the years these are very comfortable but I'm still a little skeptical about them not being leather so what happened after this is a friend of mine Jim retired from motorcycling he aged out of the process and he gave me all his winter riding gear and this is a real good quality they're electrified and they're leather that's that's the magic combination that I wanted I don't know how expensive these are the tour masters I think were I, I don't even want to speculate I'm sure these are more but they're leather and that's what I like about these for really cold weather riding but now the problem is you have to have a heated jacket or vest and the pro and then what happened these are the connectors when you go to connect them you buy gas for the bike or you get off to take a picture or video you go to put these back if you if you don't get it right and you get a spark there it blows that fuse under the seat just be aware of that and have extra fuses with you that's that's always a <laughs> cold weather riding 101 so because I always try to ride with a radar detector I always have the plug on a bike that I can plug this in that plugs the charger in but now I need well I have I'm going to use my wire gear the German gear what happens is I need two plugs so I had to make this as a, uh, a way of plugging the radar detector in and the, the electric jacket and this plugs into the bike so it's basically an extension cord that's a Y and I need the wire because the wire on the jacket doesn't reach where I have the plug this was a little tricky to figure out the length and everything and I heat shrink tubing up all the joints try to make it as bulletproof as possible and always always be real careful putting those connectors together they I don't know why they don't have a better design than that but I tend to spark them <laughs> no I'm not pitching a no hitter let's leave it at that so what happened <clears throat> when my original tour master that ran off the battery of the bike when it aged out and I think I got about five years out of it I went to buy another one and decided I'd try the battery powered one now the battery powered one you have to hook up a battery and they there is a battery they supply but I found a much better battery for about one-fourth the price and it's worked very well that is the battery that's supposed to go in this jacket is about forty dollars 
and there's always shipping. So let's assume it's 45, 47. These batteries are available from Amazon. I want to take a close. John Pothia found these. I bought a box of connectors for three dollars that had a bunch of these and I can connect this into my jacket. Now you just need to change the connector at the jacket because the batteries you buy, I got two of these for $24. So they're $12 each instead of $45. And these, the many years I've used the original ones and these, these definitely last longer. Now one thing about all these lithium batteries, there's one issue. If you go out on a day when it's 50 degrees, this lasts well, two hours, an hour and a half. If you go out when it's 35 degrees, it seems like the cold really cuts how much the life that, that how long this cycles through. I don't know how accurate that is, it, or maybe it's my imagination, but it seems like lithium batteries do not like to be cold, and I found that true with the GoPro battery cameras. When I'm shooting GoPro in really cold weather, I always take a pocket full of batteries with me. And that, I don't know what the reality is, but these work great on a jacket. Now, another thing I did, I put a bottle cap, just put a piece of Gorilla Tape over the switch, because what was happening, when I'd put the jacket on, I'd hit the switch and shut it off, and I'd have to keep opening the jacket and turning it on, and this, the bottle cap solves that problem. But anyway, just little tips, they're not in any spe specific order, but I think there is some useful information on this video. So this is something I wanted to mention. You put on, and this goes under your leather jacket, of course. I can't imagine if you have a tight-fitting leather jacket, might, this might be a problem. But I always buy my, whenever I buy leather gear, I buy it with the idea I'm going to wear it in the winter with either three sweaters or, or this. Now what happens with this, and I wanted to show this, it, it seems like, the collars on these go way up to your chin. Now I know this, you really can't do this conveniently if you have a full face helmet, but what I've done when it's really, really cold, especially on a ride home, is I'd kind of get this up under the helmet, try to show this, and this, this is where you usually get, in other words, anybody that skis knows this. If you can keep your core warm, it's your core. When your core is warm, you'll, you'll be fine. What happens if you core, if you start riding around with this jacket on you right away, you'll see the difference of what I'm talking about. Now, if you have the gauntlet gloves and they're keeping the air from going up here, and you got this on and a battery, or the one I'm going to show next, the, the one that runs off the battery, these, these put out about a, a smaller amount of heat, and then you have to change your battery in two hours. One thing nice about these, if you're going to shovel snow, put the battery on, go shovel snow, put your real coat on, Keeps you toasty warm while you're shoveling snow. But I, this, this video is not about shoveling snow. And I want to get on to what the, the jacket that I've been using lately, that's like, I call it the king of the hill. You can't get more heat than that. Sometimes you can't even run it on the high setting. This one, by the way, I run on the high setting all the time. And sometime if it's lower than 40, you get to the point where I wish I had a little more heat. But you're limited. But the convenience is there's no wires going anywhere. And problem with this too, I can't use the electric gloves. So everything in cold weather riding is kind of a trade-off convenience for I'm going to stay warm. But for people that want to ride, and, and I am one of them, I, if I go a whole week without riding, I, I start getting ants in my pants or, or something, I don't know. There's probably a word for it, maybe addiction is the right word. But even if I get out for an hour or two and just, just get a couple of turns in and and by the way, it's great for the bike if you do that. You don't have the bike sitting all winter with moisture going into the oil and the catalytic converter rusted away and the mufflers. If you have an antique bike, if you like my old GS, the muffler, if you don't run the bike every once a month, the mufflers will rust right out. So exercising the bike on a regular basis in cold weather, of course, not when there's ice on the road, not when it's 18 degrees, but, but that envelope, you can push that envelope Instead of riding, say, five months in the summer, you can, you can push that envelope out to maybe where you're only not riding two months of the year. Maybe. Depends on, and every person is different. It's not like it's a contest. But these jackets, and they make vests. I, I had a vest. I read, got rid of that right. I want my arms to be warm, too. And these seem to do a reasonably good job without having any wires, but they don't put out as much heat as the ones that run off the motorcycle battery.
So again, I wanted to thank Jim for this. This is the, the Gurling, Gurling, I hope I'm saying that right. And other people I've known that have these, I didn't have one until about a month ago, that you have these, there's a price to be paid in number one. They're thicker, the insulation is thicker, so even if you don't have the heat on, I think they do keep you warmer. That's number one. I wanted to show this because this is significant stuff. When you zip this up, it seems like this comes up, and i got to flip it up, where you can almost get it that no air is going to go in here. And boy, if anybody ever invents a product that the face shields and eyeglasses don't, I have to wear glasses, that face shields don't fog up, I've tried a million products, not happening. So anyway, you have a controller with this. This side plugs into the battery. This side plugs into your gloves. And if you're not using gloves, you can just tuck it up under there. There's a little zipper. You can roll it up and put it up there. But, but this is the nice part about this. This controller, I have found, if I put this on both the gloves and the jacket on high, in about 10 minutes, my hands are too hot. I gotta go, I gotta adjust this. And this snaps onto your belt. And, and the jacket, this puts out so much heat. I haven't found a day that my core was cold yet. And I don't, if it gets any colder than where I was riding, I'm not gonna ride anyway. But then I can adjust this to be comfortable and I can go on an extended ride and go up north where it's oh, a couple degrees colder and I can just dial up a little more heat. But again, the downside of this is you got wires. You have to, and the first time you have this, what happens? You go to put gas in a bike, you forget to take the wire off. You go, ping! Everybody does that. But anyway, and, and when you go to put it back, be real careful. And, uh, and if you spark it, you got to change your fuse in the bike. It's, it's, there's a price to be paid for comfort. And, and I know these are expensive. And thank you, Jim, for, uh, for donating us. This, the first time I used this, I almost fell over. It was so good. And I think, I don't want to compare it. I think it's, of all the things I've had, this is by far the best. Now there's another thing that just to mention things, and they're all in random order here. I, I assume anybody that's gotten this far into the video really wants to go for a ride, extend their riding season, ride in cold weather, even short rides. But but if you look at a daily weather chart, now I'm very aware of the weather from flying model planes for my whole life, basically. What happens as the day warms up, there's usually, I call it the hot spot of the day. In this part of the country, from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock, is the, the warmest. So if I'm going to go for a three hour ride, I can leave at 12, turn the jacket way up, get my two hours in, maybe on the ride home, it'll get a little chilly, I don't know. But if you're going for a one hour ride and you have the whole day like on a Saturday, go for the ride at the warmest part of the day. Some people never factor that in. Another big factor is if you're riding, and I always say this is the, the truth of truth, if I have to go to Luciano's house about 30 miles away, I can go on a main highway and be going as fast as can be, but I can take the back way through the towns and stuff, and I'll be a lot warmer because I'm never going to be going a whole lot over the speed limit. As you speed up, that, that cold air blowing by you is exponentially cooling you off. Another thing, too, if you're buying cold weather gear, if you're going to ride in cold weather, you buy black, then you turn into a human solar panel. At least if you're freezing and you stop, the sun will warm you up, you'll turn into a solar panel. If you live in Florida, like Ray does, buy white. <laughs> Again, no special order. No special order. What I found is a great idea. This is one of these pull-over-your-ears hat. If I'm going somewhere where I'm going to be off the bike for an hour to socialize, a bike meetup or whatever, I can throw this in my pocket. So while I'm standing there, eh, I, I'm not freezing. This is a great thing. I've had, in a, in a course, and I've got a whole box full of hats here, believe me. I've found out a lot of the long johns that I've bought, these are basically ski underwear, and they're thick. The problem is the reason I'm not using them, they're thick. And they don't keep you as warm as the silk underwear, the ones that are made for skiers. And this is not one of them. They're white, the ones I wanted to show. But anyway, the and let me show these. These are really, you, you can't believe it, but this is true. These are the thick ones. You go for a ride with this and you think, wow, I got a nice thick that's going to hold my body heat in. And not always the case. Now, even if you don't have electric gear, you don't have a, anything that's high tech, the simplest thing, these are silk, if you read the label. And they're 
they're thin like nylon stockings. You don't think these are going to keep you warm. These, I have found in the writing I do, they keep you much, much warmer than the thicker ones that I guess they're wool or cotton or whatever. And they're a lot more comfortable underneath, say, your leather pants or your gear or whatever. But the fact, this, this one is called Winter Silks, and these are real good. But the best one I've found, the best one, comes from Land's End, and it's, these are made for skiers. And the last item, if your face gets cold or if you just want to be a terrorist, they make these are called balaclavas and they really are good. And they even protect your nose when it's really cold. Most people that go snowmobile and know about this or whatever, and they come with this, the long thing that gets tucked into your jacket. If you're really, really Mr. Macho, you're going to go out in some really cold weather. Or if you're going to ride your bike somewhere and then walk around, you could throw this under your jacket. But this is, this is like... When it gets to this point, my writing is limited, and as I'm getting older, again, it's age-related. As I'm getting older, I use this less and less. So I hope on this video some of the information was useful, usable, and I hope if you do go out in the cold weather, drink a lot of coffee and ride safe. Now, just one thought. This is, again, the bike of choice for me when it's really cold or it's way below freezing or you can see there's ice on the roads here and wet and everything. This bike, because it had a tall windshield at one time, it has a clear tall windshield now. And if you look at this bike after I did the, the restoration, how different it is, but it's been in the family since it's new. Now these videos are meant to share good information. We have to deal with snow and ice here no matter what. Even when I'm restoring a bike, I got to deal with it. Or when I'm painting, if you look at a lot of the painting videos, you can see there's snow and ice everywhere. It's part of living in this part of the country. If you live in Florida, maybe not. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'll have to ask Gray. But anyway, through the videos, we're trying to share what I think is useful information. If you decide you're new to riding and you'd like to ride in some colder weather, do it incrementally. Don't just dive right in. But a good place to start would be with a good pair of leather gloves with gauntlets and that any, actually any heated jacket is good. Thanks for watching. Stay warm. Ride safe.